Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In his work on fate, Cicero is concerned with the problem of human freedom and fate and determinism and causality and how all these things come together. He examines a range of positions in this work and endorses some and critically attacks others. One of the extreme positions that he sets out, and it's unfortunate that he doesn't actually go into greater detail about this because we, we don't have works by him, is that of the logician and the head of the Megarian school, Diodorus, who came up with a line of argumentation or an account called Peridunaton, which means something about, about possibility. And it really rules out possibility in the way that we think of in our ordinary dealings with the world and our understanding of our own choices. Diodorus staked out what we can look at as a extreme and perhaps entirely consistent position that in effect says that everything, everything that you can possibly think of, not only in the past, not only in the present, but even for everything in the future happens of necessity. You can also say that the things that do happen are possible, but nothing else is possible from his point of view. So this is very different than most other philosophical approaches to these fundamental, whatever you want to call them, categories, modalities of possibility, necessity, and impossibility. Before we look at the examples that get brought up in relation to Diodorus, let's talk about what Cicero tells us Diodorus's position was on each of these things. So possibility is actually fairly straightforward, although rather counterintuitive or paradoxical. According to Diodorus, only what is true or what is going to be true, what will be true, is possible. And you could say, what do you mean by true? Well, you could talk about statements. What is, uh, you know, going to be the case? We can represent that linguistically or mentally by visualizing it or, or understanding it. And we can say that propositions are true or false. So I am going to walk across the room. True proposition. I'm going to walk across the room again. True proposition. I will now walk across the room again. Turns out to be false, right? And Diodorus would say, only the things that happened in the past, that we can talk about that or think about, or are happening right now, or will be happening in the future, only those are possible. Now, with the past, that's a bit counterintuitive because you might think about the tie that I'm wearing right now. I could have picked a different tie. I could have chosen not to wear a tie at all. We would say that. Diodorus would say, no, that was not a possibility. What happened, that's the only thing that's actually possible. The future is even more of a stretch, I think, for many of us, because we tend to think of the future as not yet determined. Diodorus would say, 
only what is actually going to happen is even possible. None of the other range of what we call possibilities are genuine possibilities. Let's talk now about necessity. So when we say that something is necessary, we mean that it has to happen. If we're talking about occurrence or existence, or if we're talking about it existing in a certain way and we say that it exists uh, in that way of necessity, it must exist in that way. And we often assume a certain kind of necessity between the relations of causes and effects. Diodorus tells us as far as necessity goes that whatever will be must necessarily happen. So it's not just that only what is going to happen is possible. Not only is it possible, it's necessary. And again, this is rather counterintuitive because we often do in fact think of many things as existing in a whole range of different possibilities, none of which are actually necessary. They are contingent upon something like my decision. Diodorus would say, no, even your decision, that is already something decided ahead of time. So only, uh, he says, whatever will be must necessarily happen. Then he tells us nothing happens that was not necessary. And really these are two different ways of looking at the same thing. But the tense is important here. Nothing happens, nothing occurs in the present or in the future, or if we're thinking about what happened in the past, that was not necessary, that didn't already have a kind of necessity producing it, causing it, guiding it, making it be what it, what it is going to be, what it was in the past, what it will be in the future, what it is in the present. So now we have necessity and possibility, and it's restricted to the range of what is, what has been, and what will be. All other what will be's have been excluded. Cicero tells us a little bit more about Diodorus on impossibility. And this is, I think, the most interesting part and where it becomes most stark. He tells us that whatever will not be cannot possibly happen. So this is another way of, you might say it's the flip side of the coin of possibility. It's another way of talking about what it is to be possible. Whatever will not be, so my not choosing a different tie could not possibly happen. It's impossible that I wore a different tie to create this lecture for you. It's impossible that you didn't watch this lecture. Now you may say I, I could have chosen differently. Nope, you could not have chosen differently. There actually was no choice there. Or if we want to interpret it as there being a choice, somehow it was a choice that only had one option, if that makes any sense to you. Let's look at the next one. Every false statement about the future is an impossibility. What is a false statement about the future? Well, some of them are by their very nature or the nature of things going to be false. Um, a bachelor uh, will no longer be an unmarried male, but rather be a married male next week. Okay, there we're talking about something that's an impossibility because we're talking about the way that we use language, right? That's often viewed as an analytic statement. A bachelor is a, an unmarried male. But we could also say things like, I will be alive 500 years from now. That's, unless there's some massive new life extension thing, um, that's, you know, false. And it's an impossibility that the state of affairs that that statement names could in fact be the case. Now we might say uh, that, that statements like I will be alive or I will be dead next week. Those are both possibilities. But Diodorus would say, no, one of those is a possibility and the other one is an impossibility already because the future already is the way it is, either true or false. The statements about it are the way that they, they are. So either I am alive in the future in which case the statement, I will be alive a week from now, 
is a true statement and it's possible for me to be alive in the future or if I'm dead in the future, a week from now, then the statement, I will be alive a week from now, not only is false, it is an impossibility. I cannot possibly be alive a week from now because in some way it's already decided. The last thing that he says about impossibility is that it's no more possible for things that will be to alter than it is for things that have happened to alter. That's a really critical idea here. Diodorus thinks, you know, we could, we could frame it this way because we don't actually have his own words. Diodorus thinks the future is written in stone, so to speak, if we want to use that metaphor. He thinks that everything that will be in the future has already been decided in some way. Now, he doesn't go into any great detail, neither does Cicero in his reconstruction, about precisely how that happens. But we can imagine in this, this book on fate that Diodorus probably had some sort of conception of causal agency working here and some sort of massive concatenation of interlinking causes that runs all the way from the past as far as uh, the most distant origin or whatever of the past through our present and forward into the future. All of it determined, none of it having any scope, not only for human freedom, but even for possibility in the sense that we normally ascribe to things that we think could have been the case, but didn't turn out to be that way, or it could be the case, but won't turn out to be that way. Instead, it is a doctrine that postulates what we might call a pure and across the board, completely consistent necessity. 